Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on CSS Advanced Functions by Simply Learn. In this video, we are going to learn some of the more advanced features that can be used to optimize your web page and add some extra features to it. So let's get started. So the first function we are going to discuss is CSS Pseudo class. A CSS Pseudo class is a keyword added to a selector that specifies the special state of the selected elements. Pseudo class lets you apply a style to an element not only in relation to the content of the documentary but also in relation to external factors like history of the navigator, the status of its content or the position of the mouse. Like hover which lets you know if the mouse is over an element or not. So the first pseudo class we are going to discuss is CSS hover. This pseudo class is used to add a special effect to an element when our mouse pointer is over it. Let's work an example to understand how this works. So we are on our sublime text editor and we have added a standard boilerplate to it. So first I'll create a box element. We'll give the div class box. Let's save this and see right now what is the status of our page. So as you can see, we have this simply learn tag and the heading that we have given that the color changes when you hover over me. Now add a style tag to define the styling of the box. So we'll keep the background color of the box as pink. We'll keep the width to 300 pixels and height. 200 pixels. We we'll set the margin to auto. Let's keep the font size to 40 pixels so that we can see the text clearly. And we'll align the text to the center. Just save and go back to the page. Now you can see we have this box with the tag the color changes when you hover over me. Now to add the hover effect, you just have to mention the class with semicolon and hover. So we'll mention the class box with a semicolon and hover. We'll mention the background color to which the box will change when you hover over a mouse. So we'll keep the background color to say a cyan color. Just save and go back to the page. So if you refresh and when you hover over it, you can see the color changes. So this is how the pseudo hover class works. The next pseudo class we are going to discuss is an active pseudo class. The active pseudo class represents an element that has been activated by the user either by pointing a device or by a touchscreen device. Let's work on an example to understand how to use the active class to change the color of active elements. The possible values could be any color name in any valid format. So we'll use the same example with some minor changes. First, let's change this text here. We'll keep it to click here to see the effects. We'll keep this part as same and instead of hover air, we'll use the active pseudo class. So we'll type active and we'll keep the background clear to cyan. Let's text align this H1 to the center. Now when you refresh and go back. So you see here it is click here to see the effects. Now to see the difference now you can see when we are hovering over it the color does not change it. Instead of it when we click on it the color changes. 
So this is how the active hover class works. The next advanced property we are going to discuss is the CSS pseudo elements. A CSS pseudo element is a keyword added to a selector that lets you style a specific part of the selected element. You can use one pseudo class element in a selector. It must appear after the simple selectors in the statement. As a rule, double colon should be used instead of a single colon. This distinguishes the pseudo classes from the pseudo element. So the first pseudo element we are going to discuss is the first letter pseudo element. This pseudo element applies style to the first letter of the first line of the block level element. Let's work out an example to understand this better. Just delete everything. So let's add some content to the body. Um, we'll add an H1 which says welcome to simply learn. And we'll add an H2 which says this is an example of first letter pseudo element. Let's add a style tag. We align the text in the body to the center. So we use text align center. Let's just give proper spacing here. Now to this h1 tag, we'll add the first letter sudo. So to add the first letter sudo element, just use the double colon and type first letter. We'll keep the font family of the first letter as say Lucida. Calligraphy. There's a spelling mistake. We'll keep the font size to three centimeters. We'll keep the color to red. And just add a text shadow for better animation. So we'll keep the text shadow to five pixels, eight pixels. 9 pixels and a color cyan. Now, when you save and go back, just refresh. So, this WC is a first letter pseudo element. As you can see, we have changed this first letter with a proper shadowing of a cyan color and a different font size. So, this is how the first letter pseudo element works. The next one we are going to discuss is the before pseudo element. The before pseudo element can be used to insert some content before the content of an element. Let's work out an example. So just add the standard wall plate. Inside the body, let's add welcome to simply learn. We'll add the text inside the Q tag. The Q tag defines a short quotation. So inside the Q tag, we'll add welcome. that closed to and a bit and again q tag simply learn now that we have the text inside the body let's add the styling so we'll keep the font size to of all the text to 30 pixels this is the all selector we have used, font size 30 pixels. Now before the text, we are going to add some symbols. So we'll use double colon Q before. We'll add the content with some symbol like this. We'll keep the color of this symbol to blue. And we'll use the after pseudo class to add the content like this. We'll keep this color to red. 
Now that we have everything in place, let's go back to see how it looks. You can see the symbols before and after our text. So this is how the before sudo element works. So the next function we are going to discuss is a CSS loader. The CSS loader is an animation that shows the visitor about the page when it is loading. It is helpful when a page takes some seconds to load the page content. It is similar to the buffer sign. So let's see how to create a loader. So I hope you remember the concept of the keyframes and animations. If you want to revise the concepts, you can watch the previous videos on the keyframes and animations from the playlist. So let's create the loader. We have the standard boilerplate. So inside the body tag, just add the center tag and inside it, we'll add one h1 which says Welcome to Simply Learn. We'll add five div tags with the class A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. Just copy paste it five times. So this is A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. Let's open our style tag. Inside our style tag, we'll first add color to our H1. So let's keep the color of our H1 to orange. Now comes the div tag. So for the div tags, we'll keep the display to block. Uh, keep the position to absolute. We we'll set the width and height to 10 pixels each. So width 10 pixels and height 10 pixels. We'll use the calc function to determine the left margin. So to use the calc function, to add PALC. 50% and minus 1 EM. The calc function performs the calculation to be used as a property value. We'll keep the border radius to say 1.3 EM. EM is related to the font size of the element. 1.3 EM means 1.3 times the size of the current font. We'll use the transform origin function with the value 1.3 EM and 2 EM. The transform origin property allows you to change the position of the transformed elements. 2D transformations can change the x and y axis. Keep the animation to rotate. Uh, we'll keep the animation iteration count to infinite. And we'll keep the animation duration to 2 seconds. Now let's save and go back to the page to see how it looks at this point. So, as you can see, we have our heading and you cannot see it, but we have a loader ready and we just have to add some keyframes and animations here. So let's define keyframes with the name of the animation rotate. So at 0%. We'll use the transform function to rotate it to 0 degrees. Just copy, copy this. At 100% when it's complete, it will rotate to the complete 360 degrees. So here we'll give the value 360 degrees. Now 
let's design each of the classes here that we have defined so dot a1 the animation delay will be of 0 0.1 seconds so for each of the classes that we have here we have to define them with a different color so that when the loader appears we can see them clearly with the different colors so for this a1 let's keep the background color to say cyan just copy paste it so that we don't have to write our code again and again 3 4 and 5 let's make changes here so for the a2 we want it to appear after 0 0.2 seconds with the color pink Uh, let's keep this to 0 0.3 seconds the color purple zero point four seconds with color green zero point five seconds with color black We have kept the animation delay to so close like 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds, 0 0.3 seconds so that the loader appears in a complete sync with each other. So just save the file and refresh and go back to the page. Now you can see this is the loader. We have our heading and this is like a buffer and it will show when you have some content to load. So, with this we come to an end of this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more such content. Thank you and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.